What's going on, y'all? All right, I got the MTG hooked up. And we're just going to do a quick once over of this 201 TC Mtronic. All right. So, most of the time, this will recognize the unit. Um, this does take a sec. It's not super duper quick. I've got both the Husqvarna uh, diagnostic tool for the auto tunes. All right, good. Looks like it's thinking, but at least it knows it's hooked up to a 201 TC. Gives a serial number that matches with the case. Uh, the control unit part number, uh, that would be your um, ignition coil part. And then the software version is there. So let's move forward. Like I said, speedy it's not. So let's take a look at runtime. Operating hours, number of starts, where the fuel settings are at, and then we can do run it through some paces um, electrically. Yeah, and you know, I work on these every day. I promise you, these are all the electrical components on these are usually pretty durable. You know, rarely do we see a failed ignition coil. You know, the older fuel solenoids that meter amount, the amount of fuel that goes in to the carburetor. Um, they've addressed that. All right, so let's look at operating data. So we got 100 and hopefully you can see that. Yeah, let me zoom in right here. So the saw's got two hours of run time, 7,700 starts. Uh, the, the record for starts is uh, one of my other customers. He's got 19,000 starts on his climbing saw. They need to say it's, it's made him a few. Um, unsuccessful attempts at starting since the last time. Um, and that would be, on this saw, the clutch spring was broken. I've got another video, I'm trying to get it to load up. It's like a half an hour, and I need to process it in some other way to get that. But anyway, it was trying to correct, um, a little cocked right there. But it shows you where the fuel setting should be. And we're both in the green. And shows you the maximum RPM for the life of the saw was at 32 hours. Um, and it reached 15,000, which is getting it. All right, let's move on. And I'll bring you back just a little bit and we'll zoom out so you can see the whole screen. There we go. All right, so. Engine diagnostics. Testing the control unit. Control unit is your ignition coil. That's where the brain's at. There's a temperature sensor in the carb. It's gonna test that next, but it's gonna make sure that all the electrical connections are good. If it flags anything at this point in time, there's either a broken or stretched wire. The wires that go from the ignition coil through the handle to the carburetor are very, very light gauge wire. If they get stretched and don't have a good contact, it will make these saws very finicky or to the point where when you pull the cord, it fires once or twice and shuts off, fires once or twice, shuts off, and you can do that all day long. When it doesn't get a signal from a ground or one of the leads, you'll get a couple of fires, it gets no signal, so it just shuts itself off. Very frustrating. If you have that kind of an issue, then just replace the wiring harness. They're about 25 bucks. Okay, so looks like everybody's happy. Um, does want to check the rest of the electrical connections. So I'm going to, all right. So this saw is going to shut off when I ask it to shut off to the choke position, acknowledges that, throttle advances off, and one more time just to make sure the kill switch works. All 
All right, and let's do next again. This works Bluetooth, but you still have to have the saw plugged in. I should have had this arranged a little bit better before I started having to reroute some wires. I hear you, I hear you, I'm coming. There we go. So it just wants to make sure that the flywheel's making a good spark. All right. That asked me to start the engine. Everybody's happy. Let's do the next and last thing. This is a version three Mtronic saw. Some of you y'all have heard about this. Yeah, everything's good. So here we're gonna do calibration because I know this saw was slightly out of whack because it was trying to compensate for the broken clutch spring, trying to keep itself running. So this calibration is just like a field test. The only difference is is that we'll talk to it. Sometimes if you can't do a field calibration if it won't go through that first 30 seconds of idle time or excuse me fast idle time this will kind of coach it through um, that's one of the reasons why I bought this I had a couple of times where I actually had to take a saw to the dealer out of a hundred and usually the fuel curves were so far out of whack that um, it would just couldn't keep it running it would just flood instantly in the matter of a couple of pulls so anyway, so here's the calibration process. The only thing that is different when it's hooked up to the MDG is that you actually get 30 seconds, you know, 20 or 30 seconds of set the idle time. So I would recommend that you follow that as well. Um, this will actually automatically shut the saw off. So let's just go ahead and start this. Yes, I'm at less than 1600 feet. Now, to be honest with you, I can't get a straight answer out of anybody exactly what happens during this. I don't know if this is uploading the latest fuel curves and ignition advance. Uh, you saw in the last, that warm up and electrical check, when it put that green bar in the RPM range, that's where there is, typically at start, you're at a retarded ignition timing. And then once it gets up a little bit above that, then the timing starts to advance. All right, so we put it on triangle.
Alright, so now it's calibrating your idle speed and whatever fuel mix at this point in time. This is something that nobody talks about with all the videos that have been out on this version 3 recalibration process. And I've just got my hand on the top handle. It will shut off here in just a minute. Like I said, it'll shut off in just a minute. Alright, so that's everything you ever wanted to know about what does $800 get you? Um, you know, it's got that little cover on there. It makes a huge mess. I forgot to turn the oiler down. Um, but I feel good in handing it back. I mean, I could have done this without the machine. I've done it without the machine. Like I said, it's just on those times when the saw is so far out of whack. And now you know, typically you have to go back and look at something mechanical. You, you know, you've got a little bit of electronic components on here, and the rest is just good old-fashioned chainsaw. You know, do your pressure and vacuum test, check quality of your fuel, check your fuel filter, check, check, check. Check all the mechanical stuff. Um, that's all I got for now. Hope you guys enjoyed that little insight into this.